begin now. Um, this is going to be a discussion on gays, faith and film. One of the things I wanted to just start by saying is that I, I feel the issues that are raised in all these films, and also with religion and faith and bigotry in general, are very, very important. And one of the things that made me think about this is that on Christmas Day, uh, there was an article in the New York Times, and it was about um, Archbishop Akinola. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he is the head of the Anglican, Anglican Church in Nigeria. He's a very conservative man, and his church has also formed a pretty powerful beachhead here in the United States. Uh, I think he's taken over 17 churches. And what is rather disturbing about this man are some of his views on gay people. And one of the things that he said, I think, is that he was quoted as saying, the first time I shook hands with a gay person and realized it, I recoiled in horror. He thinks that uh, gay people are uh, an abomination and they can be likened to animals, uh, pedophiles, or what they engage in amounts to bestiality. And I found this very, very concerning because this man is, is gaining power. Um, conceivably, he could, with the Anglican Church, become more powerful than the Archbishop of Canterbury. And it's caused an enormous rift with the Anglican Church in the United States. A lot of it has come about because of the very positive developments with the Episcopal Church, with the Anglican Church. But anyway, what I was going to say is, as a result of reading that article, I, I got depressed because, you know, I'm a gay man. and. I'm in my early 50s, and I remember homophobia when I was coming out being very, very virulent. It's very healthy to see younger people who have had to deal, at least younger people who actually have the opportunity to live in supportive environments, having much less shame in a way. But anyway, I, I read this article, and it made me, it reminded me of the fear I had. And it made me think, perhaps, I, I would never go back into the closet, but it really frightened me. And it brought up the isolation that I felt as a young man. And why all this relates to what we're talking about today is, you know, I, I've seen the three, well, actually, I've seen two of the films um, that uh, we're going to discuss because with Sandy's film, this is a, a new film which I haven't seen. But what I thought was wonderful about these films was they broke the isolation. And, you know, I think in many ways, if they broke the isolation with me, and I'm a rel relatively open gay man, and I live in New York, and I have a partner who I've been with for 15 years, if it had that effect on me watching these films, um, God only knows how it helped people who are much more oppressed and isolated. <laughs> and it was very, very affirming. Um, I was speaking to Jim here. He was saying that these were, well, at least with your film, Dan, the Bible tells me so. They're very healing films. They are inclusive, and one of the things I, I quite like about them is that they are respectful of faith. Um, I, I'm not uh, active in a religious way, but I do respect faith. And, and before I came here, I was telling a friend about doing this panel, and his view was, well, you know, religious people are taking over America. This is terrible. And I don't view it like that. People who interpret the Bible in certain ways have power. But I don't think there's anything wrong with people of faith. In fact, I respect them, and I think I should perhaps develop uh, in respect for that more in my life. Anyway, I'm only mentioning this because I think this is why this work and these films are so very important. And I think, in a way, it is a call to arms, because homophobia is becoming more and more powerful, and in many ways, as these films make apparent, it does profoundly shape the way in which gay people view themselves. And Daniel Carslake, I produced and directed uh, For the Bible Tells Me So, which is a feature doc in competition this year. My name is Mel White, and I cried my way through Save Me this morning, and For the Bible Tells Me So this afternoon, I can't cry anymore! <laughs> I'm Sandy Dubowski, and I directed Trembling Before God, which premiered here at Sundance. And I'm here as the producer of a new film called A Jihad for Love, 
which is about the global struggle of Islam and homosexuality. I'm Rabbi Steve Greenberg. Uh, I'm uh, the first openly gay Orthodox rabbi. I appeared in 2001 in Sandy's film, Trembling Before God, and I'm proud to say that I'm part of For the Bible Tells Me So as well. I'm Judith Light. I'm one of the stars of Save Me, and I am also one of the producers of Save Me. And I, I'm Rob Carey, and I'm the uh, director of Save Me, which is a narrative feature in Spectrum. Well, ha having done